Hey guys, welcome to yet another uh, edition of Crazy Kitchen Chemistry, except we're in a dingy corner of my basement and there's a reason for that. We're going to be working with something a lot more energetic today than the coffee we did last time. Today we're going to be making gunpowder. Now there's three uh, ingredients that we need to make any f flammable mixture or deflagrant and those would be a fuel which is going to be our air float charcoal, uh, an oxidizer, which we are going to use uh, reagent grade potassium nitrate, and then this one we need, uh, you know, an ignition promoter, like something that lowers the ignition temperature. And I've got some sulfur here that will do a great job of that. Now the ratio that we need to make proper gunpowder is 75% oxidizer, 15% fuel and 10% ignition promoter. Now that's the most common uh, mixture that's used in fireworks and muzzle loaders and, all, and rockets and all kinds of things. So I'm going to start with the charcoal and uh, we're going to measure it out by weight. Mostly that's because I'm running really low on charcoal and I want to see how many batches I can make before I have to reorder. So we've got the scale there at zero. Let's measure out 15 for our first 100 gram batch. Let's see how high we can go. Now charcoal is really lightweight stuff. So a high volume of charcoal correspond to a very small amount of weight. Looks like I got this thing set for... Ah, okay, now we've got it in metric. So that's a lot easier to understand. That's eight grams. Eleven grams. Oh, I think we can make at least three batches. Sixteen grams. Twenty-four. Thirty-one. I'll bet we can make it up to forty-five. Thirty-five. Ten more. Ten more. Come on. Forty-three, forty-four, forty-five. Okay, now we never want to make too many batches at once. I consider uh, 300 grams to kind of be my limit uh, because it'll actually ball mill faster and more efficiently if we do this. And also it reduces the risk of ignition while it's ball milling so I like to keep it small. Now let's tear our scale again back to zero grams. Now we're going to add the sulfur which is going to be the ignition promoter. All right and now the sulfur and my sulfur is garden sulfur. It's been ground down so it's got a lot of impurities in it so I'm just gonna sift out some of the larger impurities. Okay let's see it's four grams we're gonna need 30. So we did three batches. Okay, get the stick scale teared back out. And now we need to add the potassium nitrate. So we need to add 225 grams of potassium nitrate. Now this stuff is higher density and that's partly due to the fact that it's relatively hygroscopic. So we're going to have to watch that carefully. Okay, there's 21 grams. We need 225, so we're almost there. A 
184. Under 201. All right, we're getting close. And we gotta be a little more gentle about how much we add. 215. 219. 224. Oh man, this is close. 225. Excellent. Now, right now, the mixture is to be considered active. And it went back to 224. Let's fix that. Okay, 225. Right now, the mixture needs to be considered active because we have uh, fuel, an ignition promoter, and an oxidizer all in the same place. Were we to get this anywhere near a flame right now, it wouldn't burn evenly because this is what's considered green powder uh, because it hasn't been properly milled together. But this stuff is still dangerous. It, we need to consider that this stuff is still hot and active. Now, you know what? Looking at this volume, I bought a bigger ball mill, so I think that we can do one more batch in here. Okay, the next step is ball milling. Now, this, in my experience, is the only way to make reliable black powder. Uh, some of you guys will probably know about the boiling method, and in my experience, uh, that is nowhere near as reliable as ball milling. So what we're going to do is we're going to put the powder into the vibratory drum with these half inch lead egg sinkers for fishing. Now the reason we use lead uh, is because lead will not spark when they hit each other. If we were to use steel, there would be a very high likelihood that they would spark when they hit each other and potentially igniting the black powder in there. Now this is a sealed container, mind you, so this would turn this container basically into a uh, pipe bomb and would probably blow this whole wall uh, completely out. And I've had some accidental ignitions down here and it is not anywhere near amusing, especially getting the smell out of the house. So that's plenty of uh, sinkers for the job. Now generally the larger the drum and the more sinkers per unit of powder volume, the better. But we're just going to spoon that in there. You want to make sure not to get too much powder on any of the seals. The air float charcoal will be pretty dusty. All right, now that the dust from the air float charcoal has settled, we can knock the rest of the BP off of the seals. Carefully and completely seal the drum. Get it really well sealed because we don't want any of that powder coming out. We don't want a lot of water getting in from the moisture in the air. And then the next thing we do is turn it on. Before I turn it on, because it's totally gonna drown out the camera, I should let you know that we're gonna have to run this thing for approximately 20 hours. And I'm only gonna do it when I'm home. So it's probably gonna take us two or three days, uh, two or three evenings of running to get it done. But I'll check back in with you when it is all done. That's all there is to it for now. Now we wait. All right guys, now here's our finished product after a few days of milling. And technically speaking, this is entirely complete black powder. You'll know when it's done because the black powder will reach the consistency of uh, talcum powder or cornstarch. This stuff is extremely, extremely fine. And it's also uh, air float, so it can very easily dust up into the air and hang there for quite a long time, which considering that this is a deflagrant compound, it's relatively dangerous. So in order to make this stuff usable and consistent, if we're using it for things like rocket propellants or muzzle loaders, we have to granulate it. The reason, the other reason that we have to do that is because this powder, you'll notice if I tamp it down here, will start to compact. So it will get pockets of air and pockets of less air inside it as the powder granules pack together. And that could end up doing something like this. Now, what you're seeing here is a homemade muzzle loader that almost blew my face off. Well, actually did remove 
a good chunk of my lip that I had to get put back on uh, because the powder dusted inside the barrel because it was improperly granulated and I was stupid and not wearing a face mask after you know 40 or so perfectly good shots so I figured it was okay to take it off but boy was I wrong so it's very important to make sure that this stuff is granulated consistently to get a consistent burn rate now the what we're going to use to granulate it is we've got some 91% isopropyl alcohol we're going to go ahead and mix that with the powder and the reason that we're using isopropyl alcohol is because water you can also use to granulate will cause the uh, potassium nitrate to recrystallize to dissolve and then recrystallize but we want to maintain the ultra fine air float fineness of the crystals uh, in this powder so we're not we're not going to use water there are also a number of people that will use binding agents like dextrin or soluble glutinous rice starch but I choose not to use that that would uh, bind it into stronger granules. I choose not to use it because by adding a starch or adding a sugar like dextrin you will end up changing the stoichiometry or changing the ratio of fuel to oxidizer which will slow down your burn rate, change your burn rate, leave uh, more ash in the barrel if you're using a cannon per se. So I, f I think that is very important to not use anything additional to change this ratio. So let me show you guys how to do this. Alright guys, so what we're going to do is we're going to add the alcohol carefully to keep this stuff from floating away on us. And for those of you freaking out about me not wearing gloves, um, you raise a relatively good point uh, because potassium nitrate and alcohol can both dry out your skin but quite frankly uh, the amount of potassium nitrate that you would need to cause any physical harm to yourself I need to be eating spoonfuls of this crap so you can use gloves if you choose to uh, I, I ran out I used my last pair for a uh, nastier chemical reaction a nastier chemical mix that I was playing around with and I haven't had ch a chance to go out to the store and grab some new ones. But remember that all that's in here is essentially char with charcoal, which is mostly just carbon. Uh, potassium nitrate, which is a very simple nitrogen salt, it's in most garden fertilizers. And sulfur, which is even actually an acne treatment. So on their own, these chemicals are relatively innocuous. Uh, the only thing that could cause you any kind of harm is the potassium nitrate, but you need to c consume multiple grams of it. All right, now you can see how the alcohol and black powder mixture is starting to get to a uh, kind of a paste-like consistency. Now this is exactly what we want. We want to make it into a like a nice Play-Doh ball of powder and alcohol. We want it to be of as even a consistency as possible You don't want to splash like I did just there, but we want to keep it as even a consistency as possible. So when we, when we go to granulate it, we don't get any granules with air pockets or, you know, other nastiness. And make sure that you get all of your mill media out. I think I feel a ball mill bead in there. Yep, there's a piece of lead. A couple of pieces of lead. I'm going to find them. Yeah, I strained out my media, but apparently I missed one or two. There's one. Well, we're going to put this through a strainer again to granulate it. So that those bits of lead will eventually go away. see this black paste here now we're getting real close but one of the mistakes that I made is I added just a little bit 
too much alcohol. But fortunately, because the alcohol is very volatile, it's going to evaporate off. So let's give that a few minutes to evaporate off while I remove those bits of lead. And then I'll show you guys how to granulate it properly. All right, guys, now the fun part. The uh, black powder is pretty much the consistency right now of Play-Doh. It's all uh, kind of gloppy and gelatinous. And it's perfect for what we're going to do next. What we're going to do next is we're going to take like a standard sized kitchen strainer. We're going to granulate the powder through it right over onto this um, rack of paper towels. It's got airflow underneath and above. So let me show you how I'm going to do that. All right, so we're just going to take a big cl clump of this uh, BP Play-Doh sludge here. We're just going to, as evenly as possible, grate it over the, uh, grate it over the surface of the paper towels here. All right, and if it's, we'll try it a couple times. If it extrudes in clumps, that means that it is still too wet. So, take it out and let it dry. All right, guys, so the name of the game here is we're just going to extrusion press and kind of sand our chunk of BP through the sieve here, the strainer, and then we're going to try to minimize clumps as much as we can, but you know some clumps will result. We can break them up later. This is a step where you can lose a lot of volume by not having good process control, so it's good to keep an eye on uh, you know where your where all your powders ending up. I'm getting quite a fair bit on the table here, which I probably shouldn't be, because then it's all powder that won't do anything. All right, there it is, our black powder sitting there on the drying rack. Now let's let this sit overnight, let all that uh, alcohol evaporate off, and we're going to notice that it, it's going to start turning from a deep black color to kind of a steely gray. That's going to mean that we're uh, ready to test fire it. Then I'm going to go ahead, and as soon as that's ready, I'm going to show you guys how to test fire it, and then how to figure out what its burn rate is, and uh, if it's going to be useful for your intended purpose. Stick around. All right, guys, so here's the finished black powder. Uh, looks pretty good. It's been drying for a day or so now. Uh, now I'm just going to put it in a container, shake it up, break some of these clumps out, and then we'll uh, go ahead and test it out and see if it works. All right, guys, so here we are outside with about a uh, gram of powder ready to test. Now it's important to make sure that we get exactly the right burn consistency so that we can use it for something and uh, our, our performance will stay consistent. No matter what we use it for, whether it's you know a cannon, a charge, a rocket, etc. Now what we're going to look for is where we don't want it to fizzle, we want it to just puff all at once. So let's light it up, let's give it a try. Here we go. Whoa! Man, that was great. That was some of the best BP I have made in a long time. And you'll see there that it produced enough gas to knock that completely out of the picture this tin foil completely out of the picture and uh, it didn't burn through the tin foil which means that it burned relatively quickly it just released all its energy all at once so I think the extra long ball mill cycle that I put it through definitely worked alright folks just so you can catch the shape of the plume uh, here is a wider angle view of a slightly smaller amount of powder here we go whoa that's awesome. That's exactly what we're looking for. Didn't even take a second to catch like it used to, and it did not at all burn all the way through the uh, tin foil. All right, guys, so if you like this video, don't forget to rate, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you next time.